Good morning, Chapel Kids, and happy Easter. It's Jack. And Alex. We are on week two of the Upside Down series. Alex, can you tell me what you learned last week? Yes, Dad. We learned about humility. And? Putting others first. That's right. Let's see what week two is about.
everybody, it's me, Jacob. But you can call me Jake, because, well, that's what everybody calls me. Happy Easter! <laughs> Wait a second, am I upside down or are you? Ah. I know what's happening. Somebody's playing an April Fool's Month joke on old Jakey. <laughs> well, you got me. <laughs> all right, all right. There we go. So today, I'm gonna talk about humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Easter is the perfect time to talk about humility because it's the day that Jesus totally gave up what he deserved when he, oh, ow, okay, okay. All right, neck, it's you and me now. Oh, oh, oh. All right, that's fine. You wanna play? Let's play! Oh! 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 Necks are not supposed to bend that way. But I'm back to normal now. At least my neck is. But the picture's still just a little. I mean, if it could just. <laughs> We're not doing that again. You know something? So what if I'm upside down? I'm not gonna let this keep me from celebrating the most amazing event in history. And no, I'm not talking about the time I learned how to juggle. I'm talking about the time when God did something so brain boggling, it turned the whole world upside down. At least it turned my whole world upside down. My brain is still boggling. I'm boggling all over. <laughs> You'll hear all about it in today's story. But first I've got to figure out how to get my whole world from upside down to right side up. Hey, okay, some brain ideas. What if you turn your screen upside down? That, should be, that shouldn't be too hard, right? Or maybe there's a better way. Stay tuned. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapters 18 through 20. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been making plans to silence Jesus. The things he said and did challenged the way they had always lived. He was upsetting the world as they knew it. It is better if one man dies for the people than if the whole nation is destroyed. Then one of Jesus's closest friends, Judas, betrayed to the religious leaders where Jesus would be praying after the Passover meal. The leaders sent soldiers to arrest Jesus and he allowed the mob to take him. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of angels but then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. As Jesus was tied up and led away, Jesus' closest friends scattered, though Peter and John followed at a distance. What was it like for them? Try to imagine for a minute that you're Peter. Only hours before, Jesus told you. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. And you, Peter, protested that you would die before deserting. But now Jesus has been arrested. And if you get too close, they might take you too. So you trail along like a stray dog as soldiers haul Jesus inside the home of the high priest. What's happening in there? The servant at the door frowns as she peers at you. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? I am not. You're ashamed to lie. But what good will you be to Jesus if you get arrested too? You huddle close to the fire in the courtyard as voices float through a high up window. What's this foolishness you've been teaching? I didn't say anything in secret. Ask the people who heard me. They certainly know what I said. You feel sick. Now they've taken Jesus. You know nothing will stop them. Someone else asks whether you're one of Jesus' followers and you snap. No, I'm not. Minutes later, another man asks whether he saw you in Gethsemane with Jesus. Your stomach churns. Nope, not me. 
You realize you have denied Jesus three times, just as he said, and all you can do is stagger to your feet and run away, weeping. Now, imagine you're John instead of Peter. Somewhere in the chaos, you've lost Peter. So when soldiers haul Jesus away to the Roman governor, all you can do is follow, alone. From the back of the crowd, you witness the terrible drama as the governor Pilate brings Jesus out. What charges are you bringing against this man? He has committed crimes. Pilate takes Jesus away for questioning. You can only pray that he sees through all the lies and stops this madness. You're horrified when Pilate brought Jesus out again, battered and bruised. I find no basis for a charge against him. No, crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate hands Jesus over to the soldiers who force him to carry the heavy beams of his own rough cross. You know where they are going. Golgotha. It's a hill outside the city. As in a bad dream, you force yourself to follow. Along the dusty road, you find Jesus' mother, Mary, her sister, and Mary Magdalene. None of you can speak. You arrive at Golgotha in time to see soldiers nail Jesus to the wooden bars with heavy spikes and raise the cross up high. You strain your eyes to read the sign placed above Jesus' head. King of the Jews. You nearly choke on dust and grit. You've seen Jesus do amazing, powerful things, and yet he's allowed himself to be taken and battered. You glance over and see Mary sobbing, so you place your hand on her shoulder. When you look back up, you see Jesus watching his mother through the pain in his eyes. Dear woman, here is your son. Jesus looks directly at you, eyes filled with love. Here is your mother. Yes, Lord. You are overwhelmed to know that Jesus trusts you to take care of his own mother. But the terrible truth sinks in. Jesus knows that he will die. He's planning on it, just as he's been saying for weeks. A short time later, you see him lift his gaze to heaven. It is finished. Then he bows his head, and you can see the life leave his body. All the air seems to leave your own lungs, too. You thought Jesus was God's chosen one. How could he be dead? Now, as we move ahead, imagine you're Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' close followers. Unlike so many others, you've dared to stay there, at the cross. And once Jesus is dead, you dare to follow the men who take his body for burial, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. A garden tomb. The evening has faded, and it's now the Sabbath. You want to honor Jesus by anointing his body with spices, but it will have to wait until the Sabbath is over. So you stay hidden indoors until early Sunday morning, then you make your way through the dark streets. The stone. What will I do about the stone? As you arrive, you recall that a heavy stone was rolled to block the entrance of the tomb, but now... It's gone! You gasp as you peer inside the tomb. Gray light reveals. <gasps> it's empty! Heart pounding, you race back through the streets to the home where the disciples are staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. You can see the shock in Peter's face. John gapes, and then they both begin to run to see for themselves. At a loss, you follow slowly, weighed down with exhaustion and confusion. When you reach the garden, you see Peter and John ahead, trying to make sense of it. You hang back as they leave again. What more is there to say? As the first rays of dawn light up the garden, you reach the tomb. Tears spill down your face as you bend to look inside once more. Two figures in radiant white sit where Jesus' body lay. You can't even begin to think what this means. Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away. I don't know where they've put him. You turn away to catch your breath and find another man standing right there. At first you think Peter or John has returned, but it's not one of them. Maybe it's a gardener. 
Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him. Then I will go and get him. Mary. The moment he speaks your name, you see, you understand. It's Jesus. Teacher. You fling yourself at his feet because there isn't anything else you can do. Gently, he touches your shoulder. Do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. You rise to your feet, still weeping, but your tears are full of joy. You start to run again, because you can't wait one second more to deliver the news. I have seen the Lord. Jesus chose to face death for those he loved, and now he's defeated it. Jesus is alive. It's the best news ever for everyone across all time. I don't know about you, but every time I hear the Easter story, my brain literally explodes. Well, not like literally, literally. I mean like figuratively, literally. Seriously, think about it. When God made the first two people ever, he told them if they ever ate fruit from the bad tree, they would surely die. Well, they did it anyway, and they died. And they stayed dead, because that's how death was supposed to work. So did everyone who came after them. Abraham died. Moses. All these people died and they stayed dead because that's how death was supposed to work. But then came Jesus. When Jesus died, everyone thought he was going to stay dead too. But God can do stuff that nobody else can do. So he rolled away the stone and brought his son back to life. I'm getting lightheaded just thinking about it. Jesus is so strong, not even death can stop him. So. It's kind of like everything's upside down in this story too. Jesus dying when he didn't do anything wrong is upside down. Jesus coming back from the dead is upside down. Even I'm upside down. Whoa, all right, okay. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get back up now. I'm getting really lightheaded. Oh. Here's the one thing to remember today. Jesus put us first. Jesus died on the cross so me and you can have a relationship with God that lasts forever. And Jesus rose again to show that there's literally nothing he can't do. Literally, literally. So, you should definitely put your faith in Jesus if you haven't already. Ask someone you trust if there's anything you don't understand. That's what I'd do. In fact, does anyone understand how to make a video turn right side up again? I mean, I've tried everything. Wait a second. <laughs> My phone's upside down. <laughs> My phone was upside down the whole time. Ugh, oh, classic Jakey. Um, Dad, why are we upside down? Wow, we are upside down. You know, I bet Bo is playing a trick on us. Hmm. That's better. So Alex, what was your favorite part about the Easter story? My favorite part was Jesus rose and went to heaven. That's my favorite part too. Parents, talk more with your kids about how Jesus put us first. So Alex, what are your plans today? My plans are, we're going to do a virtual Easter egg hunt. Oh yeah, that's right. Chapel Kids, we are doing a virtual Easter egg hunt online. The link is below in the details. I hope you all have a great Easter. Bye. See ya.